Hello, bienvenue, welcome and buenos dias to Bradley Walsh's Soccer Shockers. Coincidentally, I am Bradley Walsh and for the next hour or so, I will be your guide on the tragic mystery tour of slips, trips and comedy clangers on the football field. Now, some of you may know I do a bit of comedy and a bit of acting, but you may not be aware that back in the day, I played a bit of footy. In fact, in the late 70s and early 80s, I played here at Griffin Park for Brentford Football Club. This way, Chris. So, when my new agent, who's Polish, by the way, called Nikolai, well, he's a builder as well, said, we're gonna come down to Griffin Park and do some filming, I couldn't resist. So, why don't we go inside? I'll tell you what. Whilst we're waiting for the chairman to open up the doors, why don't we start our comedy of errors? Now, as everyone knows, the goalkeeper is the last line of defence, but I tell you what, when he gets it right, you can be unbeatable. But when he gets it wrong... Ooh. Is he coming yet? <laughs> Where better to start than with Jens Lehmann, the funny man of football and part-time children's entertainer? Did someone order a clown? You can bet the Yens had a right laugh about this afterwards. Not. Here's Wrexham's keeper, Matt Baker, showing almost telepathic understanding with his fullback. Look at the speed in which he gallops back to his goal just in time to see Quinn slot it in the corner before celebrating in front of hundreds of adoring travelling away seats. Look, Baker's so slow getting back, one of his teammates decides to save it. Gillingham versus Portsmouth. Now there is only one person who can beat Portsmouth's Jamie Ashdown from that distance, and that is Jamie Ashdown. Go on, son, I'm ready, yeah, got it, up. Uh. Tottenham, Newcastle, 1974, and Newcastle keeper Tony Bell's first league appearance. He only had two things to remember that day. Don't forget to turn the gas off at home and try not to make a complete tit of yourself at work. Later, the Newcastle fans petitioned to have a stand built, not in his honour, but actually on top of him. Hard to know what the biggest mistake was here made by Benfica's keeper and M. William. Was it committing himself so far off his line, or was it wearing his dad's slippers for such an important game? See, they're comfortable up and down the stairs, but there's absolutely no grip. Here's Crystal Palace keeper George Wood, with the old adage, if at first you don't succeed, balls it up completely. Look. How he rises unchallenged by any Aston Villa player, puts it in their path, then pushes a shot going wide into his own net. That's what you call multitasking. There's a reason why Jackie Chan has never done a film about football. It's because martial arts and football don't mix. Here's Preston's Toivo Moylanen to prove it. A horrendous miss kick provides Stuart Barlow with a tap-in. Now, if there's one thing worse than playing for Man United, it's being French and playing for Man United. God hates that. So stand up, Fabian Barthez. Keep standing. No, keep standing. Nice one, God. Another packed stadium sees Swindon's keeper Tom Heaton rush off his line to collect a long ball and missing it completely, allowing Port Vale to score. Where was he going? If he'd have gone any further out of his area, he would have had to pay to get back into the ground. Here's Kilmarnock keeper Gordon Marshall making the ultimate goalkeeping clangor by allowing a daisy cutter to go through his hands and his legs and into the net. 
With mistakes like that, Gordon, you'll give Scottish goalkeepers a bad name. In this game between Ipswich and QPR, Ipswich keeper Kelvin Davis proves that too much time on the ball can be fatal. All he's got to do is thump it 60 yards and it land on someone's head. Well, he got the second bit right anyway. I'm glad he can see the funny side. Here's an intricate set piece from the Bundesliga and an even more intricate display of goalkeeping from Stuttgart stuttering number one. Oh, hang on a minute, he's their number 25. Well, that might explain things. It doesn't get much bigger than Man United versus Arsenal, but things couldn't have been much worse for the Gooners. With a comedy of errors right from the kickoff, David Bellion had scored within 20 seconds. Manuel Almunia's captaincy lasted nearly as long. Goalies weren't like that in the good old days, of course, were they? Well, here's a masterclass from the 70s with Sheffield United against West Ham. OK, maybe times haven't changed that much as Jim Brown spills this rocket back into his own net. This is the great man Schiltz pumping the ball forward to cause mayhem at the other end. Poor old Tom McAllister succeeding only in clawing the ball into his own net. And good to see the advertising was spot on. Who are you going to call? Goldbusters? Back to Scotland again, where another keeper was doing his best to put his country top of the goalie gaffs. Dundee's Robert Douglas placing this one perfectly off the opposing striker's head and back into his own net. Well done, Robert. Port Vale against West Brom, and the cameraman may have been off the pace, but not half as much as Vale's Kevin Pilkington, who seemed to want to personally hand Lee Hughes this goal-scoring opportunity. And this is some sterling work from Tony Pennock. Just look how he commands his area. Under pressure, he collects the ball with calm and precision, assesses the situation and rolls the ball out, straight to the opposition. What a panic. This is the fortress that is Celtic Park, usually. But Dundee couldn't quite believe their luck as Hoops goalkeeper Jonathan Gould collects comfortably at the back post, only to squeeze the ball back over his own line. Not so much one of the old firm, more like the infirm. Oh, Jonathan. Over in Portugal, and this is Rodriguez Raul Iglesias. Yes, really, that really is his name. Extending some amazing hospitality to the opposition striker. Maybe he should stick to the singing. Look at the patient build-up from Man City as they lay siege to the Swindon goal. Thankfully, Frank Talia is ready to wave the white flag. Maybe he was just waiting for the offside flag to be waved instead. And 
A sweeping ball forward sees Luton quickly turn defence into attack and then Blackpool's goalie, Phil Barnes, decides to do exactly the same thing. Whoever said attack is the best form of defence? Berry's Paddy Kenny shows some nifty footwork here. One touch. Oh, that's it, yeah. As he leaves the second touch to John Macken. What a combination. Chelsea v Leeds has always been an explosive fixture, but there seemed little explosive in this shot until Gary Sprake helped it goalward. Blue is the colour, and I'm sure so was the language after that. Now, it seems that Man City's Andy Dibble thinks he's the king of the dribble. Here he is, being robbed by Newcastle's Keith Gillespie. That'll teach him to try and nutmeg a centre forward when you're a goalkeeper. Let's have a look at that again. Here it comes. Ooh, lovely footwork, Andy. Through your legs. <laughs> oh, no, sorry about that. Blackburn against Colchester, and it looks like Stuart Nelson has been caught napping at the back, quite literally. Wakey, wakey! But the alarm calls come a little too late. With Mansfield on the attack, Darlington stopper Bertrand Bossu decides to take action. To me, to you, 2-1. Here is a real collector's item, a Nigel Winterburn goal. Not one that Martin Hodge would want in his collection, though. This is the aptly named Enrique Hilario of Porto making a laughing stock of himself. Talk about moving the goalposts. And as they come down the tunnel, the crowd cheer. Yes! Thanks for that, mate. Sorry to get you out of bed. Silly old fool. Anyway, it's a good job the old caretaker was here, otherwise we'd still be in the street. Having said that, and said it rather well, I thought, this is Griffin Park. Yes! <sighs> home of Brentford Football Club, or the Bees, as they're known. And it has been their home since 1904. Actually, I still think they've got the same caretaker. That doesn't matter. Now, the Bees have got some very famous fans, as well as their chairman, Greg Dyke. They have Hollywood superstar Cameron Diaz and an even bigger Hollywood superstar, Dean Gaffney. So, back to the job at hand. Let's continue our goalkeeping horror stories, or as I like to call them, holy schmoly goalie. Good. Now, as if goalkeepers didn't have enough to contend with, they also have another horror, the back pass. The back pass. Here's Manchester United's legendary goalkeeper Peter Schmeichel giving Barnsley a leg up during a cup match by completely miskicking an innocuous back pass from Gary Pallister. He even manages to slice it right into the Barnsley striker's path. Now we've all heard about the crowd being the 12th man in a football match, but never the pitch. But look at this for a through pass. Ipswich's Richard Wright comes a cropper from this cheeky sod, allowing Andrew Johnson just to slot it home. Here's a simple back pass to Grimsby's simple keeper, Paul Crichton. What are they thanking him for? It's him they should be kissing. Again, Bristol City keeper Steve Phillips has too much time to deal with his back pass. That has got to be the biggest nutmeg in history.
The defender manages to find the only part of the area that isn't knackered and he still makes a hash of it. No point kicking it now, mate. Here's our old friend, karate expert, Toivo Moylanen, again still showing panther-like reflexes for Preston. This is now known the world over as doing a Moylanen. This genius is Vladan Stojkovic, not only doing a Moylanen, but then showing his version of lightning pace by running like the man who's just been struck by lightning before slide tackling the net. Even when you're sure you're going to deal with a back pass, the pitch can have other ideas, as Colchester's Aidan Davison is about to find out. If you think he's gutted, just listen to the commentator. Well, here we are in the changing rooms. The games are won and lost. Happy memories for me here. It was many years ago, half time, two nil down. I actually found a fiver. Yes, I think it slipped out of one of the players' jock straps. Anyway, there's an unmistakable atmosphere even now, and an unmistakable smell hangs in the air. Probably that jock strap, or maybe the caretaker. Have you never heard of flushing? Dirty old bloke. They often say great football matches are like theatre. Well, if that's the case, this lot are a pantomime. Get ready, kids. He's behind you! If Darwin's theory of evolution is correct, then the next generation of goalkeepers will need to grow eyes in the back of their heads. Here's Norwich's keeper, Robert Green, proving that you should never rest on your laurels. After coolly holding onto a cross, he thinks he's broken down Nottingham Forest's attack. He takes the applause before throwing down the ball. From nowhere, Johnson appears and nicks it to score. The funny thing is how quiet the Forest fans were, desperate not to give the goalie a clue. Here's goal poaching, artful Dodger style. Just look how sneaky the talky striker is, hiding right behind Stockport County's Neil Cutler before pouncing to steal a goal. He also stole the goalkeeper's wallet and a gold pocket watch. In fact, he got three of his teammates' necklaces here. The funny thing about this goal is that the scorer, Robbie Keane, isn't even involved in the build-up play. He must have just come up from a trap door behind the goal to score this one. Whatever's happening, keepers are nothing if not entertaining. Here's a keeper in France who believes if you want something doing properly, do it yourself. Trey Bon, son. Then here's Colombia's legendary keeper, Rene Higuita, with his scorpion kick. Red Nap. Goodness me, have you ever seen anything like that in your life from a goalkeeper? <laughs> That is quite the most remarkable piece of goalkeeping I have ever seen. Look, Nikolai, what time does this thing start? There's nobody here, just me and some old caretaker keeps looking at me and winking. No, I said winking. Right, we'll just get on the phone to the club and sort it out. And by the way, how's my extension coming along? Hello? Hello, Nikolai? Bloody tunnels. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, balls ups. Let's leave the goalkeepers alone now, they can't defend themselves and come to think of it, neither can this lot and they're supposed to be defenders. Is that my tea? Here's Chris Swales for Ipswich showing the highs and lows of defending. Here's the high. There's the low. South End's David Morley makes a mess of his back pass to allow Rochdale to score past a despairing Lionel Ritchie in goal. 
A nightmare for Norwich's Rob Newman against Man United. He picks out King Eric, who flicks the ball over the keeper and makes a proper cantonar out of him. Des Walker shows the defending skills that made him the first name on any England manager's lips, usually when they're in the middle of a nightmare. This is Aston Villa taking on Queen's Park Rangers in the Carling Cup, and quite clearly Captain Olaf Melberg has been told that his team should concentrate on the league. Well, now there's a chance, because that's what I call leading from the front. Holland, the home of total football. PSV versus Ajax, and there is some lovely passing on display. Oh, wait a minute. That's not total football, that is total cr Blackburn are under pressure from Brentford, but don't worry, Colin Hendry is on hand to tidy up. Just look how he spots the forward run of Gary Blissett before anybody else. What a pass, and what a finish. How to defend continental style. Here's Miguel Badez shouldering a ball to the centre forward Torres and he showed just as much panache with the finish. Oh, Miguel. Ronaldinho would have been proud of this one, though. Somehow, Fredrik Soderstrom looks one way, and there you go, plays it to the other. Tonito, goal! Fredrik, you silly Soderstrom. Burnley versus Derby, and John McGrill shows us how to make something out of nothing here. Great chest control, quick look up, and bang. Picks out his man with a pinpoint pass. Just a shame he plays for the other side, John. Oh well, looks like he worked it out in the end. And now a masterclass from Paul Elliott. Just look how much time and space he seems to have on the ball. A delightful lob pass. If only it had been the other way. The dark art of defending takes on many skills, ball handling, of course, being one of them. Once this chuckle brother has cleared the danger from a free kick, look how he readies himself for the corner. From our mustachioed villain, here comes some ball handling the ref would never approve of. Carlos Valderrama may be famous for his hairdo, but it looks like he's being got by the short on curlies here. Well, here we are in the treatment room, and this is the only place where a professional footballer won't mind being seen having his bruised body massaged. Well, bruised bodies are okay, but in the case of this next lot of players, maybe they should come in here and have their bruised egos massaged. Here's Jens Jeremies, the German and Bayern Munich midfield maestro, using his head in a match against 1860 Berlin. Keeper's ball. Oops. Vorsprung dork technique, as the Germans say. And here's the dork. This is Jan Seifert, using perfect power and placement, but lousy geography. He needs to be 100 yards in the other direction. You've got to feel for Ian Dowie here, because you know that he's convinced himself that he's scoring at the right end. That's the goal of a man who's taken too many blows to the head, folks. Come to think of it, that's the face of a man who's taken too many blows to the head. Back to the days of short shorts, folks, as a young Steve Bold latches onto an Alvin Martin long ball to half volley it into his own net. Maybe this was the moment that Boldy started losing that Barnet. <laughs> 
David Seaman could never really understand other footballers. A lot of what they did just went right over his head. His teammate Lee Dixon add in to his confusion. Man City's Jamie Pollock shows a deft touch to beat this player, then a daft one to beat his own keeper. The name on the shirt says it all. Oh, brother. See, back in the 70s, it didn't happen because you had real defenders like Bobby Moore. I wonder what he'd make of all these own goals. He'd probably sympathise. This is Western Supermare's Kevin Brown demonstrating the dangers of wearing your boots on the wrong feet. He probably couldn't do that again if he tried. If you're watching Kevin, don't try. The problem with own goals is that it all happens in a split second, unless of course you're Forest Green's Wayne Hatswell. Just look at the time he's got on the ball. Time to pick a corner, Wayne, then go and hide in it. Liverpool's Jimmy Traore, showing just how to lose the plot and the ball in a cup tie against Burnley. The six-yard box is not the place for tricks, although I bet the fans wish he could disappear. Here's Lockeren's Hein van Hazebrook very kindly giving lessons to opposing strikers. When you break into the box on your own, it's nice to have the extra man to cross it to. Step forward Motherwell, Steve Hamill. What a first touch. This one demonstrates the importance of not being distracted by personal grooming during a match. If you watch closely, he doesn't mean to head the ball, he's just flicking his hair at the wrong time. Nice hair, though. Do not adjust your sets, folks. What you're seeing is real. The team in white are Indonesia, and they are supposed to be attacking the other end. Instead, they knock it around their opponent's Thailand before Mercer Defendi scores in his own net. Why? Because Indonesia didn't want to play Vietnam in the next round. Judging by the state of that pitch, they're already in Vietnam. Now, the secret to a long back pass is not to play it too hard. A bit like that. In fact, his shirt translates into, I am a toss pot. Atletico Madrid have no chance with such a knock need defence. That's one way to stop the opposition from scoring. Do it yourself. Here's Leicester and USA number one Casey Keller being made to look like a complete number two by teammate Steve Walsh. Ian Wright does the honourable thing and claims the goal. Whatever that hand signal means, it does the job here, causing Dietmar Hirsch to loop a spectacular bicycle kick back over his head and into his own net. Maybe not one from the training ground, eh? Who's going to get to the ball first? The goalie is hoping it's his defender. OK, it is his defender who gets there first, with a great toe poke. That face says it all. Yeah. 
At first glance, everything seems normal, but appearances can be deceptive. Leonardo Dede rises like a salmon to head home past bamboozled Lehman. He's got him hook, line and sinker. What an odd fish. Never mind, keep your tail up, son. Luton aren't quite sure what to do with his free kick. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll land it plumb on the opposing striker's head. Plumb, indeed. Maybe it's the unruly beard that's put them off but the Forest defence get themselves in a right old muddle. I bet they went over that one with a fine tooth comb after the match. Here, Cambridge United's Scott Eustace decides to give Plymouth a bit of a head start. He's clearly a scholar and a gentleman. Late Orient against Torquay, and the O's seem to have cleared the danger. But here it comes again, and this time Amara Simba decides to put an end to the move once and for all. Finish. A lightning break down the left causes chaos, except for one man, Gareth Hamner, who keeps his eye firmly on the ball to volley beautifully into his own goal. Notts County are running right against Fulham here. The London club not helped when their keeper punches the ball straight against Ernie Howe. As he knows, that's clearly not how it's done. This one's a lovely finish. Look how Billy Russell perfectly lobs his own keeper to score for opposing Grimsby. Coventry, West Ham from the early 80s. Gary Thompson, well in control here, good pace. Oh no, the keeper's come out, it's gone in. Some happy hammers here. This is Doncaster's Steve Foster, timing his defensive run perfectly to place the ball into his own top corner. Colchester weren't complaining. Now, some say lower league football can be of a poor standard, but I think this is just unlucky. Goalkeeper Kevin Pilkington anticipates the dangers and makes the clearance. It's just a shame he hit his own defender, David Pipe, as he did it. <laughs> Liverpool, the great team of the 70s and 80s. League championships, European Cups, surely they never messed up. The might of Walsall were the visitors in 1984. The Reds have got this covered, haven't they? Dodgy back pass, Grobelar is stranded. There's two men on the line, and one hits it off the other. Phil Nils, the goal scorer there. Leicester City against Spurs, and Casey Keller back again. He couldn't do much about this one, though. Gary Doherty stretching to lob his own keeper. Doherty, who has played in defence and attack, a bit confused about his position in this game, perhaps. On, there, Norwich and coach Nigel Worthington were under pressure. They needed a win from anywhere. Well, luck was on their side here. Cardiff defender Callum Davenport stabbing his goal line clearance against his own keeper, Neil Alexander. Norwich celebrated like they'd won the league. Well, a game anyway. The magic of the FA Cup and Huddersfield, the underdogs against Crystal Palace. Here's why, some dreadful defending ending with Dudley Lewis putting it into his own net. Teammates and Dudley not amused. Hello? Anybody here? Right, well, we are now in the backroom area of the club, and this is where the chairman and the board are, usually. 
And as you can see, the walls are adorned with moments of the club's history captured forever. Famous heroes, past and present, line up to take eternal praise from the fantastic fans. Is that supposed to be some sort of a joke? Mind you, I am a bit of a looker. Of course, for every Hall of Fame, there is indeed a Hall of Shame. And I tell you, it's got some pretty famous faces. Watch Man United's Welsh wizard Ryan Giggs as he glides through challenges, beats Seaman, he beats Campbell. Then he beats me, how he misses the open net. This guy couldn't believe his teammate could hit the bar from so close, so he tried it himself. Oh, yeah, you can. A lot of footballers these days are accused of being one-footed, but here's Les Ferdinand in his QPR days playing against Man City, proving that he is the exception. Yes, he can miss an open goal from a yard out equally as well with both feet. No wonder it says classic on his shirt. Now, every central defender dreams of finding the ball at their feet in the box and doing what they're trained to do knock it safely into the stands. All good strikers know that they must take advantage of any situation, any opportunity, any lucky rebound, any chance I can do that again. I weren't ready, Muppet. I don't know who invented the saying, that one was harder to miss, but I know what game he was watching. This one is even worse. Lovely build-up play by his teammates and an open goal as he puts it onto the roof. Never has a name on a shirt been so accurate. Turdo. Even the ball boys put in a transfer request after this one. Ah, now this must be better. England, who's that at number eight? Is it Gaza? He has the awareness of Gaza. He has the vision of Gaza. He runs like Gaza. Nope, that's not Gaza, that's Jeff Thomas. Reading versus Forest, and Forest get a break. The number 10 sprints onto it and slots it across for a certain tap in. Steve Stone. Not only does he look like your dad, he plays like him. Here's a familiar sight. Man United cutting their opposition to pieces and with Giggs and Cole to aim for, Cantona picks out Steve Bruce. Never mind, Steve, you've still got your looks. Now here's a sitter, route one style from the keeper's big kick. One bounce, a touch from the defender, and he hits the bar. The striker can only watch from the sidelines. I'd get used to that if I was you, mate. Sometimes strikers can be caught in two minds in front of goal. This fellow wasn't sure whether he should volley spectacularly into the top corner or retire from football and open up a fruit and veg shop. It's a tough choice, mate. Ipswich, Oxford, and from the long kick, the Oxford defender loops it over his own keeper. Ipswich striker Marlon Harewood can't believe his luck. Ipswich fans can't believe their eyes. Look at this for a howler. Watch out for the number 11 sprinting into the box. He's been dreaming of this moment for weeks. Max Hoyberts will have nightmares for life. You could always take something away from an Arsenal game. You could take the courage of Tony Adams, take the magic of Dennis Bergkamp. Or after this miss, you could take the out of Freddie Lundberg. If you want to succeed as a Liverpool striker in the shadow of Rush and Dalglish, you really have to raise the bar. Here's Ronnie Rosenthal wishing the groundsman had done exactly that.
Some will say being a great goal scorer is about being in the right place at the right time. Sandor van der Heide got that bit right, but still managed to miss the open goal. He decided to spend the rest of his life crouched over in this position. Flicks it past the defender, round the keeper. Wazo Taiwo, can't believe he's missed from there. Back to the Bundesliga, where normal German efficiency was in full flow. A precise attacking move ready to be finished off in style at the far post. Christoph Dabrowski, nine! Luton's Paul Elliott beat that though, did he ever. When you're playing Man United, you've got to take your chances. Blackburn's on the attack and striker Nathan Blake beats Fulham's Chris Coleman to the cross. Blake will have wished he hadn't, because Coleman would have been more likely to score. Phil Stant is the luckiest man alive. Like all these other clowns, he missed the chances Graham would have scored. But Stant can forever say that he blazed wide on purpose because the whistle had gone for offside. Yeah, right, mate. We believe you. Sousa Wamberto. What a name, what a miss. Jon Dahl Thomason didn't hit it off in England when he played for Newcastle. Before that, though, he'd been prolific for Dutch Giants Feyenoord. Not here, though. How did he miss? I don't understand. I'm glad he thinks it's funny. They like their footy in Belgium, too. Club Bruges are often the team to beat. But just to make it clear, Sven Vermant is attacking, not defending here. By the time I've said this guy's name, this clip of footage will be over. So here he is, Mohamed Eliou Dati. If there's one time you don't want to miss, it's in your big derby match. Graham Sharp did it for Everton against Liverpool here, though. It's not just the players making a spectacle of themselves in a football arena, however. Look at this fella. Liverpool against Everton again in the 1986 FA Cup final. And he weren't going to miss it, was he? God help whoever's below him when he needs a pee. It's a funny old game. Laugh, I nearly fell off my chair. This Chelsea fan decides to have a run out at Stamford Bridge. Roman Abramovich liked his turn of pace and paid £30 million for him. Here's a Scotland fan having a stroll on the Wembley turf. The Scottish goalkeeper decides not to grab him in case he drops him, but the fan does interrupt a routine by the Metropolitan Police synchronised display team who decides to give chase. Did someone say Keystone Cops? Finally, all four boys in blue tackle their man and give him a right good kicking. Arsenal versus Lance. And just look at this for a one. Boys, I'm on the right. I'm in space. Pass. Now that's what I call zonal marking. Wenger clearly unimpressed with his new signing. Here's an early prototype of Ronald McDonald falling foul of Brian Clough at a Forest game. Despite the early setback, this clown went on to be loved by millions with his funny voice and big red shiny nose, especially when he led Forrest to European glory. <laughs> Freddie Lundberg's a midfielder who's got it all. A powerful shot, he can close down the opposition and he can even tackle himself. Oh, Freddie, Freddie. The Champions League semi-final between Arsenal and Villarreal and the pressure is on. Hang on, hold everything. There's a squirrel on the pitch. What's he going to do? Is he going to book him for time-wasting? Or maybe he's off for his winter break. Nikolai, 
Nicola, are you there? What's the matter with these phones? Somebody call my agent, stroke builder. He's Polish. See how my extension's getting on and tell him I don't think this personal appearance is happening today. 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 Do you know something? It's really easy to lose your temper in a football ground, especially during a game when all the testosterone is flying about and blokes are shouting and screaming obscenities at each other. I like it. Anyway, it's no wonder that the whole thing can descend into mindless violence. And I'm not talking about the fans. I'm talking about the players. Here's Bruce Rioch demonstrating the ancient art of clobbering someone without anybody noticing. He checks to see if the victim, a uh, player, is all right after flooring him, and he even gets a free kick. When it comes to a heated debate, you cannot beat the Spanish. The two blokes who look like the Mafia hitmen are having their argument spoilt by the bloke who looks like the schoolteacher. The big man smacks him and then takes cover behind a piece of A4 paper. And all this because he brought his moped back a day late. <laughs> Sri Lanka versus the Maldives. The Sri Lankans have no sympathy for the injured. Talk about kicking the man while he's down. That led to the mother of all barnies at the final whistle that included officials, coaches and some blokes in jackets. All except one bloke at the top of the screen who just wants to swap shirts. Here's mild-mannered Diego Maradona reacting angrily to reports that his dealer was moving away. Watch how he cuts through the crowd as if they were the England team, and then he stops so he can be held back. And as the fight rages on, where is Diego? He's where all little blokes end up in a fight, right at the back. That is very bad. Tut tut, naughty naughty. But. Amidst all the chaos of pitch invasions and players kicking lumps out of each other, you know there is one man who stands alone, unmovable, fearless, like a rock, amongst the sea of madness, adored by one and all, loved by everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the referee. No, I really do give you the referee. Take him. We don't want him. I can't stand the referee. The man in black. He is the devil. Ah! This referee gets more than he bargained for in a match between Senegal and Congo when he decides to throw the book and his cards at a Congo player. As a brawl breaks out between the players, he decides to bend down and gets kicked up the arse. A FIFA official then comes on waving a white card, which I presume means carry on fighting. In an effort to stop the spread of diving in football, referees have been told to show no mercy to any offenders. This ref was forced to give himself a three-match ban for simulation. This ref is not only polexed by the ball, but he gets another kicking as he lies on the ground. Luckily, his attacker was Palace striker Mark Bright, so none of the kicks hit the target. Here. Mark Crossley wins the award for most popular player by knocking out the referee with his clearance. Here it is again, and again, and again. Lovely. Good referees should always be close to the action, just not that close. They must be thick-skinned because in this game, someone's always trying to knock you down. But most of all, they've got to be tough, because sometimes at the final whistle, they haven't got a friend in the world, and it seems like everybody wants a piece of you. It's just enough to make a grown man cry. <laughs> he just wants his mum. Well, that just about wraps it up, and I'm sad to say we are almost at the end of this multi-million pound showbiz extravaganza that is Bradley Walsh's Soccer Shockers. Thank you very much to everyone here at Brentford Football Club. No matter where I go and what I do, a part of this club will always be with me. But it just goes to show you, no matter how famous you are or how much you earn internationally or at club level, 
If the television cameras are on you, you better get it right. See you soon.